we're live. Welcome back to episode 30 of Catabolic Window. We're here with my ex-coach, Tom Taylor. Assassin, you shit, no, I'm joking. Um, we're here with Tom this week, my ex-coach. Uh, but first, we're going to start with how everyone's week's been, except Jack, because he's late. He's taking the role of Luke this week. So, Luke, for being on time, how was your week? Week has been all sound, man. Just been revising for exams, really. I went home earlier on in the week because the missus wanted to see me and obviously had to go and see her. So I was training at Asgard. It was all right. Nothing nothing too crazy. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's actually where I did my prep. And I'm so glad I don't train there regularly. It's just full of Muppets. Like, you know, when it's just got that, like, how dare you use a D-handle vibe? Like that. Well, that's future, yeah? Yeah, basically. <laughs> that's Mong City. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And yes, aside from that, it's all good. Scale weight has decided to calm down this week. So that's good because I just gained a kilo randomly out of nowhere. Uh, when the week before I gained like 100 grams, I'm sure you're going to be pissed off about how I phrased that. Down. 100 grams. <laughs> It's easier than saying 0.1, surely. No, it, but it's just not done, though, is it? <laughs> yeah, I've put 150 grams this week. No. It's all good. All right, all John, good. how's your week been? Uh, week's been super slow. Still sort of adjusting back to normality after uh, the student year. Uh, this week has sort of been the first run way into the fresh mesocycle. cycle. So kind of setting new numbers at a new gym as well. Um, but yeah, just... Cracking on. Nice, nice. Yeah. My week's been all right. Tom will remember the stress of this, but I got my dissertation results back. Um, I got a first, so that was good. Happy good, good oh, yeah. That, yeah. Fucking Thanks, menace. Because all I was getting thing. was stress off DP about that. Oh my lord. <laughs> yeah, that was that was not a fun time back in the day, but we're here now. But other than that, I'm on holiday. I'm in Morocco right now. I'm burnt. I don't know if you can see my face, potentially, but so far, this has been a much less sabotaging holiday than last year's because I'm not already up like a kilo. In fact, I'm down. And I've trained twice out of three days that I've been here. So that, that's a pretty good return, I'd say. And I've absolutely rinsed and everyone at ping pong. So I'm the best ping pong player in Morocco. That's Good what man. I'm saying. That's my week. Certain dominance from day one, mate. Mate, I'm telling you, I'm athletic specimen. I'm not built for bodybuilding. I'm built for sport. But this is the life I chose. Or oh, I chose me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> right, Tom, how's your week been? And what's, mate, tell everyone a little bit about you. I've all do, mate. I'll try and sort of get into it. So this week, mate, has been... I'll introduce myself. So my name's Tom. As Dan said, I was his former coach. But um, online coach have been now for just over two years, actually. It came up on my Instagram memories. But other than that, I've been doing that full time for two years. Luke, I've been friends with Luke since, I don't understand how long. But same with DP as well. Known you, for, known you guys for quite a long time. Asked me to come on. Here I am. But this week has been very, very good. Very, very good. Week nine of prep, down two pounds in scale weight. Also, as well, uh, Deloading, deloading at the moment after a four week mesocycle. If you know, you know. But other than that, it's all good, mate. All good. It's been a fantastic week as always, mate. I always have fantastic weeks. But I'm going to Ireland to Ireland tomorrow to see uh, Big Jack Buff. So it's all good. And then you're making a trip there, back man. over there. Yes, mate. Going out, going, hopefully going to PCA Ireland. No, the only reason why I'm doing that show, mate, is because a guy two years ago said that he'd beat me. So. I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> we do this thing throughout podcasts where we just say, oh, somebody said this or somebody did this and then don't name drop them. And it frustrates a lot of people. But the thing, the thing is, mate, it's like, I think I have created this false, false narrative in my head. So you didn't even say it like, oh, I'm going to beat you. You just said, oh, yeah, you, you, you do this, I do another. So I just take, took it as like, oh, basically calling me a bitch, you know what I mean? So I'm just going to go over there and have a bit of fun. But it, it worked out pretty well because I had Jack over for his prep and he wanted to sort of repay the favour. So it works out pretty well, mate. 
Although I think that person is doing a different category to you now, if I'm not I, mistaken. I don't know, mate. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully not. Well, that that's a new damn rants, by the way. Oh, Tom, you don't know. Do you know about the damn rants? Yeah, man. I've seen, I've, it's been a while, hasn't it, since the last damn rants, hasn't it? It has. We don't do it with special guests. So I don't want to break people's ears, but Tom's that will be a new special, one. Well, I can do a damn rants <laughs> later. I'm I not can do it on that guest. subject. He can handle it. He can handle it. Oh, Tom's heard many a rant from me, mate. Oh, he's heard the waffly voice notes. The works. I've heard them all, mate. I've heard them all. Right. We will give these four quick fire questions now, and I, I'm going to judge you heavily based on these. Oh, okay. Are you ready fire for these? Across. Yeah, fire on crossbow. Right. We're going to start with your top three monsters or energy okay. drink. Okay, so white monster. Then and that's number one, mate. <laughs> that's number one. Then I will go. Is that, was it just like in general, just en- energy drinks in general? You like yeah, any you've tried like C four whatever they've got bang anything. Mate, I'll go lemon HDZ by Rain. That's got to be second. I don't think I've had that one. Oh mate, incredible, bro, and has more caffeine in the monster actually. And then I go for the black and blue monster goth vibes from when I was like fifteen years. Yeah, old. no, that's, that's a goat choice. That I one. <laughs> Right, we've got your... Oh, welcome, Mr. Late. Hey, Here mate. he is, Jack. Discovery call over Ambrose, sorry. Oh, mate. <laughs> he's, he's out here discovering people, bro. Wow. <laughs> oh, mate, doing a Brightman discovery call. <laughs> right, next question. Go to top set tune at the moment. Go to top set tune. Um, 50 Cent Hustler. Um, I like it. I like it. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting some drum and bass, but that, that mate, I've been, I've been rinsing. I'm waiting for Harvey to bring out his another his, his new mixtape, mate. I think I've, I've. He's actually sick. He is really good, mate. Really good. Yeah, I rate him a lot. But uh, right. fifty cent, fifty cent, and DMB. The goes right. Death Row meal. Fuck, man. mate. It's just so easy. If anybody knows me out there. Domino's. Domino's. Domino's, mate, easily. Then I'd probably, dealer. I would get, I, honestly, mate, I would get the usual off-plan meal. Six Krispy Kremes. <laughs> Domino's pizza. Garlic bread. This? And then cookie dealer with Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And it would be the, um, oh, what's it called? I forgot the name I've not bought it in ages. Like the polar bear one. That's like my daily calories. The usual mate. off plan. What? Yes, yes. Mate, people say to me yes, that that is the usual, bro. It usually costs me like I actually worked out a month. I was spending like <laughs> 170 pounds a month on off plan. <laughs> That's ludicrous. You do that ev- what every week you eat. Yeah, mate. Yeah. So it cost it cost me about third. Um, I think it was about four, just under 40 quid for all of it. That's mad. Is that just Wait, so I put a full short? large pizza? Yeah, that's like eighteen pounds. Then you've got the crispy cream. How many calories is that though? That's like well, that's two like months. two and a half thousand. Then you've got like uh, crisp, six crispy creams, which is about I think it's about I don't know how much that is. And then you've <laughs> that's got about fifteen hundred at least. Yeah, then you've got garlic bread. Always garlic bread because you can just devour that. And then you've got ice cream and getting cookie dealer on top of that. Mate, that's got to be over five k calories. Easy, bro. And I kept losing weight after that as well. How yeah, I remember that seeing that. Eat? How long does it take you to eat? Um, I don't know, mate, about twenty-five minutes. I get the well, I get the Domino's done in about just just under ten, mate. Luke, if you did that, you you'd have to fucking do a cut, mate, because your appetite would be in the bin. <laughs> Bro, I'd be ruined. That's actually quite impressive. Ruined. That is mad. You know what, this is a bonus question spin off of that, Tom. Mm-hmm. How many calories do you reckon you could nail in a day? Mate, people say 10K. I would say that's pretty easy. I could probably do like 10K in about two and a half, three meals. So or double that. <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon I could probably fit nearly, I reckon 17 and a half thousand calories. Post prep. When are you going to test it? Post show meal, post show meal. Post show meal. <laughs> That'd be like what 25. Is, what is your current body weight sitting at, at nine weeks old? Pardon, bro? What is your current body weight at nine weeks out? 
Oh, mate, £237 I weighed this morning. And just for reference for people who may not know you, listen, how tall are you? I'm six foot four. So I'm one skinny ass bitch. That's what I'm at, mate. Six foot four. Um, <laughs> Real. Um, but I started this, I started the prep at 262 pounds. So I've lost 25 pounds so far. It's going well. It's going well. Badly. All because he stopped them off plans. I, uh... yeah. I, I'm not even I'm not even joking, mate. It was probably a big, a big chunk going away just from that, honestly. It was I never of... knew you had that much. I thought it was pizza and cookie I thought it was... I yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, but, uh, man, I'm not going to lie, mate. I didn't post it because I didn't want Christian to see it. But, mate, he, <laughs> but I told him at the end and he was there like... It was just... It was just, it was the norm, mate. I'm not even joking. I was spending 160, 170 pounds a month. That's I'm pretty much money, dropping mate. weight the next day, though. <laughs> That's that's the thing, mate. I used to, I used to train legs on that day. It always used to be a leg day, and it was, mate. It was it was pretty bad, so it worked out pretty well. It worked out pretty well. <laughs> to be fair, how much do you normally lift on like a, a leg day? What do you think the total volume of like the kilos you lift is, mate? On it, mate. If this is a week, if this is a week four leg day, mate, mate I'm just going to run through it. It'll be like Luke will know as well, mate. Five sets of calves. It'll be like four four sets of seated ham. Three sets leg press with a hack squat, well, so four sets of compounds, and there'll be like five sets of leg extension. So they stop with like a giant set of um, that's my Saturday session. Fuck that. Yeah. No wonder you need that many calories, mate. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's that's yeah, man, it, 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 it worked out well. Well, and the last of the quick fire questions your biggest gym pet peeve. Oh, man, I, how did I knew this is going to come up, mate? <laughs> and I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give the bog standard answer if I don't care what other people do. Because at the end of the day, mate, I'm an online coach. I do care what other people do. Um, people that think they're lifting with good execution and they're really, really not. Oh, facts. facts. Yeah, agreed. Do, do you know when they come off a set and they're so hyped? And then they're like, I absolutely nailed that. And I was there like, mate, you didn't do like two good reps. <laughs> Is there anyone you want to name drop in this scenario or no? <laughs> no, nah, just general gym goers. I just, I, that's why I left Destination, mate, because it was just horrendous. Really? Yeah, mate. It was just awful, bro. Honestly, well, I, that I fucking saw Livingston guy. Oh, mate, I saw him having people. Um, hammer shank, the hammer shank leg pit was awful, mate. Oh, I did see the clip about hammer shank leg press. It's the thing is, destination repost that I laugh every single time I see mate, it. It's yeah. awful, bro. So I had to leave there, and that's that's why that's what it is. And they think they're doing really well, and it's just not. It's just it's not looking good, bro. It's a shame because that's such a good gym. It is, bro. It is. It really is. Forty quid a month for all of that. Yeah, mate, it's it's not bad, but it's just the people there, bro. They're just, it's not, it's not good. Not the vibe, not the vibe. It's I remember when we went there and there was that guy like duct taping plates. Mate, that was that, the dude, that bro. Oh That's no, the dude, mate. Yeah, bro, he's such a meathead. He's probably on like four grams a week. He's mate, fucking not, oh, <laughs> mate. four grams. Fucking hell, man. Honestly, I've me. never seen such a meathead in my life. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. But there are so many then, mate. So many. And I was there like, bro, gym as well. But I see so many people post stuff and they're like, got a new pick. Touch, mate, I put that thing on the night, touching new loads. Let us not even go there, mate. And then touching next thing loads. you know. <laughs> oh, I, next that was you know, one of my questions. What do you think about people who touch new loads? I, I saw a post the other day. And I had to unfollow the person. Sorry if they're what if they listen to this. They Justify, are, don't worry. Justifying <laughs> the fact of touching new lows and how it can look bad, like that makes no sense. That makes zero sense whatsoever. Yeah. When you've progressed a weight that I much, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, you know exactly. And they tried justifying it, mate. And I was there like, what is going on, mate? Oh, I'm thinking, okay. Then next thing you know, mate, I'm thinking that's just you can't justify touching new loads and making it look shit. Oh yeah, you can tidy up next week. Well, no, 
It makes so no sense. I give myself less stimulus and more fatigue and risk injury because I, I, I put a new number in the logbook. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> All about the logbook. So many people do that, though. Like, it is a joke. Literally half the people I follow on Instagram, like, half the people I talk to on Instagram do that. Like, it, but, like I'm, there's some crazy, certain people that train at a very, crazy. very good gym with very, very good kit um, that do that. And it is absolutely abysmal. They'll take like a four record and they'll be like, yeah, I'll run this up to a seven and then add a five aside on a press. Man, like, it, yeah, that's going to work. It, it's crazy though, mate, because like people say, oh, I don't care what other people do and stuff. But let's be honest, I care about other people because at the end of the day, if you really deep it, we all have the same goal of trying to improve our physique, blah, 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 blah. Like we all might compete, might have lifestyle clients. But at the end of the day, we all have the same goal. If I see somebody doing something prescribed by their coach or whatnot, but they can do something better. I mean, obviously I'm going to care about it and talk about it because they can, it can, they, they can get, there's just some amount of progress to doing something else. Because you see these people, they track their sleep, they track their nutrition. Next thing you know, they're going to the gym, mate, they're doing all this crap. And I'm thinking all that progression is going to waste, all that hard work, mate, that you're doing. I literally DP what I want, mate, came to me being a power lifter. Next thing you know, <laughs> mate, he's, talk, he's talking about, getting rum and stuff and reducing load like i'd rather somebody talk, be talking about that rather than being like put on an extra 20 kilos each week it just doesn't make sense so that's the reason why i care and talk about it just because of course i'm going to we all have the same goal and if i see somebody limiting their progression it's it's not it's not would you right i see this a lot but would you say you're talking to someone and they have a coach and you're like oh crap because what you've seen them doing is just abysmal and clearly their coach is not you know taking them in the direction that they want would you say something or would you not because this has happened to me this happened to me three times in my gym there's like a local coach here and everyone thinks he's the fucking bee's knees and he's got no clue when it comes to like i don't know any any kind of high quality exercise he's all about touching new loads half reps um he had a guy diet and he lost like 50 kilos on his bench. And he was like, yeah, that's just the diet in it. And I was like, bro, what? Yeah, bro. That makes complete <laughs> sense, mate. Yeah. I was like, bro, what? Yeah, what would you do in that what situation? I've always... Tom been... writes in the training plans, don't you, Tom? The, oh, mate. I, t- I'll tell you something. Um, so there's a guy called... Well, I'll say his name. This guy called Matt in the gym. And he's got this coach, but I'm very good friends with Matt just recently. I wouldn't do it if I didn't know them. If I saw him on Instagram doing something and and they had, I'd have to be really close to them for me to sort of say something. But he's in the gym and he's doing these sets, mate. And I'm thinking, what is he doing? Like like 30 rep giant sets on like a compound. I'm thinking, okay, train to fight. He's not doing reps in reserve or anything like that. So he doesn't have a scheme of doing that sort of stuff. I'm thinking, okay, bro, what's your your session like? And he showed me a session on his his notebook. I'm thinking, Mate, what is this? Oh, is it Inst- old school volume? And, volume, it, volume. and honestly, mate, it was there. Luke Harper was there as well. And he went, what the fuck is that, mate? And I was there like, I'm not even going to say anything. <laughs> I go into the gym next week and he goes, mate, is there, was there anything wrong with my session? And I was there like, yeah, there was this, this, this and this. And he goes, I appreciate that, mate. I appreciate that. And then I was there like, yeah, that's really shit. And then we went for every single session. Then we just said, what's wrong with it? what's this what's that and then he was talking about his coach not listening to him and then we get down a little <laughs> rabbit hole don't we get into a real rabbit yeah, hole of like yeah. i haven't i haven't had anything changed for like eight months and he's just done this he can't justify this and i'm thinking i'm not even going to get down into that rabbit it's hole but so, it's so awkward when they're like screaming for you to like intervene but you don't want to poach clients. that's that's the thing that like, i'm not doing that no way but i'm just saying yeah, maybe yeah. you should implement this so you can go and talk to him about it and then maybe he can then yeah. i think as i think as a coach that's really really good because i've had a few clients come up to me and say oh my previous coach did this but you're programming this why that's like that's like got a gold mine to me because i can justify my methodology my ideology around training why i do certain things and why they're going to see benefit but like when a coach just goes oh yeah i don't know well yeah i did it because this person like it just makes no sense like yeah. when someone they asked me that i i love that sort of stuff because they they get to know the previous coaches um understanding of training my understanding of training and that's only going to increase and enhance their style of training so it's always good to i would always try and bring my opinion only if i was really really close to that person but i'd never sort of message someone on instagram and be like hey mate this is this is wrong unless there was like really really like in if they're gonna like 
injure themselves. Yeah. Like that's how bad it that's how bad it would be. But hopefully somebody would step in by then. I've had yeah. that couple of times where people have like asked me for my opinion on what they're doing, and they're like, "What what's wrong with it?" And I'm like, "Honestly, bro, I would just start again." Like, <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, but mate, the honestly, gym. Start mate, the it gym. needs to, it needs to be happening, <laughs> mate. No, it's like the training program. Grab <laughs> <laughs> the muscle, restart. Yeah, just go for loads of marathons, bro. Don't eat any protein. Go yeah. to, into instant atrophy. Lose all your muscle, then just start again, bro. <laughs> Uh, it's just when people are like spamming exercises like oh i know this exercise does something to do with this muscle group so i'm just going to do all of them yeah it's 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 it, i and this is where i i it's, it's probably a me issue it probably is a, a me issue where i care too much about other people um and there but then again mate, i want to see when i see a friend and they and they do everything in the background like i said like nutrition they get their steps in they're doing everything but when they come to the gym and, and their coaches program them like this absolute waffle and this pile of garbage i'm thinking this guy is nailing everything outside of the gym and then as soon as he's coming into the gym and the reason why he's nailing everything is because he wants to maintain his performance and actually stimulate the muscles therefore grow and get better in terms of physique development it's just shit like i was just thinking what is going on mate so yeah sometimes i might i'll have to step in and I'll be like Maybe not try and perform like this. Try and do this. Next thing you know, mate. Yeah, bro, felt so much better. Then they go, you go down that sort of route. But I'd never try and poke someone's client. Never. It's a tough one, that because you do want to help them. Yeah. And you've got to frame it in a way of like, I might do this <laughs> instead. And you should probably do it too. But you can't say that because if they go back to their coach and go, well, this person said this. Yeah, yeah. And you get it's honestly, mate, situation. it's really, really hard. And it's really, really hard because you're sort of like stuck in the middle because you care about this person's progression. But then again, you don't want to sort of like step on their toes, step on the coach's toes. You're just going to try and sort of like be this grey middleman. Yeah. The... I always just say like, ask your coach why they're doing that. I'm sure they'll have a reason. Ask yeah. their coach why it's shit. Yeah, That's yeah. Yeah, just be like, you know, uh, like, in the, uh, like sometimes you'd be like, oh, you know, maybe you should ask your coach why they... Why are you such a monk? <laughs> why have you gone for this exercise instead of this? And they should probably be able to give you like two or three reasons. I'm sure they will. And then, you know... Uh, mate, I'd be lying if I said, you know what, mate, your coach is an absolute dickhead. I, I, I have said that to some people. Honestly, I really have. And I, I sometimes yeah. do regret it saying it. But then sometimes, like I said, mate, it's, it's my own issue of caring too much about other people. I, I just want them to progress just as much as my clients do and it's just one thing i would want to be like what is he even programming what's that person programming it makes zero sense and they go oh yeah but no it doesn't make any sense whatsoever bro at all. <laughs> yeah. and they'll but then you just get into this but then again it's all good it's all good <laughs> i'm not even gonna get into it i'm not even gonna get into it mate. <laughs> this is gonna be a tom rant not a dan rant <laughs> <laughs> right did anyone get any questions on their question box i got a couple i did yeah, I can come as well. Should we go with informative or like piss take first? Oh, bro, piss hey, take. Piss uh, take. Question from Keno: How many lactic Alex could Tom bench, and how many reps per Luke could he do? Um, <laughs> so as in, so as in, like seventy-five kilo bench, one hundred and fifty kilo bench. Like oh, how shit. many? Could he do? Oh, mate, I don't know. You're gonna end up with a fucking. Ben deadlift set if you do a fucking 75 kilo bench. Yeah, man, I'll be repping I am repping it for a hundred. Um I don't know. Yeah, I did I did that bench for 180, didn't I? But that was pretty meh. A bit power lifter, a bit DP style, but I don't know, mate. I'm the wrong king now, man. You didn't even yeah. touch a chest. I know, mate. Yeah. A, little, a little actual insight here. I actually tore, I got a grade one like pet tear in my shoulder from doing that. It was horrendous. Really? Couldn't prep for like two weeks. Like I think it was like four weeks before prep. The guy who was doing it behind me and spotted me he was like, "Oh my god, mate, I've ru I've ruined your prep." And I'm like, "It's not that bad." Next thing you know, mate, I got it sorted out, and it was like, "Yeah, the grade one, grade two pector, decent." Why were you doing the bench? Was it some yeah. study or something Instant. like that? Yeah, mate, it was some study, mate. So like, um, just some study of like how of like how aroused I was when I was doing it with um no um no music music and that was it pop the chub when you have music on <laughs> yes bro <laughs> <laughs> right 
Uh, but I reckon, uh, how much do you weigh, uh, Matt Dick? 76. Mate, one and a half of you, bro. How many? Two and a half. Two and a half, maybe. Two, maybe? No. Oh, one. Yeah, I think that's doable. Great right, question, I've Kevin. got a question. This is from my missus. <laughs> Big up, Izzy. Um, right, she's asked, what what was like the hardest part of coaching me? <laughs> you can be honest here, you can be brutal, because I, I'm probably not easy to coach. Hmm. Too many. Too many to say one. Too many. Nah, nah, I'm thinking. <laughs> Personally, I, I don't think there was anything bad. There's a difference between a client moaning and a client trying to understand stuff. And Dan would always ask questions. And then what you do is like, with with Dan, what I found Dan, with other people, I'd be like, okay, do this. Do, like, do that. But with Dan, I prefer to like sort of like dangle the carrot and be like, mate, if you want to try this, and then he'd message me and go, bro, I tried this, mate. It just felt so much better. I'm going to do things this way. And I'm there, like, sort of, like, made his decision that I sort of, like, wanted to make, like, a couple, like, probably like two days ago. And he'd go into his push session and be like, yeah, bro, I'm going to do, like, um, this press, then a high incline press, and then a dumbbell press. And then he'd be like, yeah, bro, it felt great. And then that's all sort of people that you want. Like, you can sort of take matters into their own hands in a sense and decide, sort of like work it out themselves what's best for them. It's always all well and good as a coach being like, yeah, try this. But with Dan, he would rationalize to me why he would try something that I would want him to try anyway, rather than me be like, yeah, bro, try this. He was, um, he was quite good at that sort of stuff. And you did that for every session, Dan. Well, that just deep it right now. Your push session where you did three presses, your pull session. Your leg session where you wanted to do different things with your leg extension and your ham curl. You didn't like the ham curl, so you went on a different ham curl and then you've set them. All these different things, mate. I reckon that's why I can go coach us now, you know. But that's the whole I goal love... of coaching, though. That's the whole goal of coaching, in my opinion. You want to take someone to a point where they feel like I've learned enough where I can take things into my own hands, and that's the goal of the coach. I can make smart enough decisions, and Tommy T's a good coach because he still lets me ask him questions. As a friend, mate, exactly. I'm always going to doubt him. So, you mean yeah, he doesn't ignore you. That's mad. It's yeah. Like he's not yeah, me and Luke <laughs> yeah. just ignore everyone, even our own clients. <laughs> <laughs> just, bit, yeah, just bin everyone off, mate. Athlete mode. <laughs> right. So we've established Dan's a fucking great client. It, 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 it was. It was a good. It was a good one, mate. It was good. Like I said, I, it I was. I enjoyed it. It was good. Sometimes you send really fucking long voice notes, but other than that, it was cool. Yeah, I do that. Jack's yeah. worse than me at that, though. Yeah, bro. A million percent. Yeah, bro. No, it was like, yeah, bro, I'm, I'm just, I'm pretty baked right now, but um, <laughs> 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 I'm pretty baked right now, but yeah, reverse banded high and Clyde Smith went really well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> three minutes into your voice note, I turned around, but I'm sorry, I'm waffling, I'm so stoned. Yeah, he goes, mate, I'm so stoned right now. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Fair. Next question I got, a little bit more informative, this one. So does having more fat cells make it make fat loss harder or easier? I got that same one. He asked me as well. What is this? Fat cells. Sorry, Tom, you broke up there. What was, what was that, bro? Fat cells. Does having more fat cells make it fat loss easier or harder? So basically, if you're if you're fatter, does it make it easier to lose fat? <laughs> what is that all about, mate? Yeah, if you're obese, the first few weeks of diet should be a piece of piss, and your yeah. rate of loss is going to be a lot greater than somebody with less body fat. What? What is that all about? Fat cells. That's an interesting way of saying more fat. Yeah, basically saying that, okay, bro, I'm really fat. Does that make my fat loss really easier? <laughs> what is that? More adipose tissue. Yeah, if you've got more adipose tissue, you can have a probably a higher set point because your maintenance is therefore going to be higher. So you've got more runway. Uh, then obviously you're going to be holding a lot of fluid. Um, so your first couple of weeks, you're probably going to be losing loads, like five pounds each week. You're going to be like, oh my God, it's going so well. And then people storm, they go, oh, what am I doing wrong? So um, that's what I would do if you are a... a 
an, an individual with loads of adipose, I would set your um, set point nice and high, and then obviously slowly decrease horrific intake when weight stills. In the short term, it's like the first couple of weeks, it's going to be really fucking easy. Like if you just start doing a couple mm -hmm. of things in the long term, it's probably going to be quite difficult if you've got a shitload of body fat. Yeah. Correct. The, the curve curve of dieting. The curve of dieting. <laughs> yeah, man. I wasn't quite sure if that question was getting at sort of like when people have been in a surplus for a long time or even if, if it's just somebody that hasn't trained. Um, I believe it's fat cell hyperplasia where like all of your current fat cells are, are full and saturated so you then start to make new fat cells. That's what I thought it was talking about. Yeah. Uh, the, I sense. couldn't remember like the science. I didn't think it was going to be that in depth, bro. But um, goodness gracious me, uh, I guess it, it would be, wouldn't it? Really, if yeah, because you've got more, more to like deplete. To but that's just it. being fatter, though. So yeah, yeah, that a, a calorie deficit is still going to diet you down. And if you're generally, if if you're right, if you filled your fat cells and you're continuing to put on fat, then you are fatter. So then you're in the same point as like we talked before, where you know, someone who's lean, who's got more fat cells, maybe it doesn't matter because they're not full, right? They just have, like, do you see what I mean? Like, it, it doesn't matter. The, the level of your, the level of body fat matters more than what your, how many fat cells you actually have. Like, you might have this many, but if this many are full, who cares? Surely, right? Yeah, yeah. But honestly, it makes sense. It makes sense, bro. <laughs> um, I, let's, just, let's just be honest, mate. If you're if you can, let's just put it into hypothetical reason. We're coming to peak off season where fat cells are going to be therefore increased or full or whatever. You're going to, your, your set point is therefore going to be higher because you've obviously brought your calorie intake to a higher point. It, like like Jack said, it doesn't really make much difference if because you might like what Jack said. I'm not going to repeat it. Yeah. If you have more fat cells, then you can get fatter without needing to make more new fat cells. But in terms of like losing weight and gaining weight it's not as if the number of fat cells you have i mean correct me if i'm wrong but the number of fat cells you have isn't gonna like affect your it won't have any impact yeah zero yeah when we go in into a dieting phase we're not like right how many fat cells do i have we need to find this one out yeah let's periodize how many fat cells we're gonna lose what are you on about bro <laughs> If just we, a question um, off the, <laughs> the side of that. Um, I think it'd be interesting to have a bit of a discussion about how fat is too fat for off season. Oh my lord! DP oh. fit first gaining phase about three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we've got the upper threshold there. <laughs> I, I would honestly say DP fit. I really, really would. Unresponsive, insta sensitivity probably not even there. <laughs> um, it's got to a point where every single biofeedback was just negative in terms of appetite like all that all that stuff that we look for all all negative i think when you start seeing negatives within your biofeedback response that's when you're probably pushing it too far then you can look at the obviously the metrics of blood blood glucose all that good stuff and then go from there i really really would do you i can say feel you're it when you push too far like you just feel like shit yeah no i completely agree i don't i I always start feeling uh, my. That's why two sixty was my sort of bench benchmark because I, I when I went up, went up there the first time, I knew I could lose it. So I went there, I went there the second time and felt well, I'm not going to push past this because I knew I felt pretty shit last time at this point. So, um, so obviously from previous data that I gathered from that bit of that set point, I just, I just felt pretty shit. Two something was like I've said two sixty two, I think it was. So. So I'd appetite started going, energy levels started dipping, sleep actually started being hindered because I literally couldn't breathe. Oh my lord. But you know, we moved. Yeah, I reckon I won't push past well, I've got to like 92, I think. But that's probably because I had like three off plans that week before going into a diet. So I was like, oh, it's gonna be shit. Um I won't push past that. But I think you're as fat as your fattest body part, if you get me. So for me, when my midsection gets like too like, really, it's a bit shit having a, a shit front and it being fat because you just look shit in every photo. But when my abs like go and I literally cannot see them at all, I'd be like, right, fuck this, I'm dieting. That's me, bro. 
Yeah. You are dieting though, so nah, three weeks time. He needs to, to be fair. Oh yes, I do. <laughs> it is it is needed to be fair. No offense. Nah, fair. How much have you gained this push? Uh forty three pounds. Bro, that's too many fat cells. For fuck's <laughs> sake. Yeah, sorry, guys. I'm, Bro, I'm stuck. I'm stuck you know, Jack, you have to cut it off at 35 fat cells. If you go any more than that, you fuck. <laughs> fuck, man. It's been an eight-month gaining phase. I didn't even realise. I looked back and was like, Jeez. oh, shit, it's been eight months. Yeah. Yeah, don't feel yeah. like that long. It doesn't feel like that long ago you were coming on here, like, food focused, like, I've got my cream of rice after this. It's yeah, but that was, me in, that was me in a gaining phase. That was probably me at, like, 190 pounds, probably, like, 10 pounds ago. I was like, Ooh. Yeah. Well, I have a question that no one's asked me, but I want to talk about it because... <laughs> I respect I respected this person and I still do to an extent. I think some of the things he says, he's a fucking muppet. Name and him. that is trained by JP. Oh uh, everyone hate me. Uh, he put up a story saying people should compete yearly. What? I think and he's probably not... talking for the enhanced people there. Yeah, but his yeah, logic man, no. was Surely. about getting into condition. I understand that. I do. But he was like, oh, these people that have, like, permabolts, you don't, do you? You still diet down. It's just you're not getting, like, to stage lean. I don't mm. know. I don't know how I feel about that. It's all I context, really, isn't like, it? Really? If, probably, if, you, if you gave him some context about, like, oh, for this individual, it's, it's like the, again, mate, it's like the impossible question because it's like you have no context of the individual, their previous history on, like, how – like how much they dieted, all that good stuff. But I think what he's probably trying to say is if you were like a seasoned competitor, maybe, you know, try and obviously compete every year. But then if you sort of talk about per- permables, obviously you're not going to be balking for years and years and then obviously you have to pull back at some point. But I do sort of agree in the fact that if you, you can make a significant amount of change to your physique within like a 12 month period. But again, all, all person dependent, somebody who isn't adherent to the plan isn't going to make so much progression within 12 months. But if you get somebody that is adherent to the plan you can go every 12 months it's all context yeah I think it's just the way he phrased it because I look at some people people that are going for their pro cards and stuff and they've had like a like an 8 month like well, not even that like 6 month gaining phase and they're about to jump into like a 5 month prep I'm like you're literally spending half your time in each mm. you're not going to be growing that much over that year like look He's a bit mm-hmm. of an outlier, but you know that Yemi kid that's ridiculous, but like, <laughs> with the small waist. That, yeah, he he's going for his pro card, but he had like a what six, seven month off season. If he had like two years, he would win a pro card. There's no question about yeah, it. Weight category in that, you know, he's already you, you don't know where he, he is. To be fair, he already is a pro. Oh no, I think he's trying to win a pro show. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I get you. Yeah. But then, yeah, it might, it might just be a case of like just slapping on a little bit more and then coming right back down. You never know. Yeah, that's it. It's all context, mate. It's so hard. But I feel like JP, mate. Have you have you seen some of the answers he puts into his uh, questions, mate? They are hilarious. I think he just doesn't give one anymore. He really, oh, yeah. really doesn't. Uh, he did. He did one. Uh, but he's got like a, a master's degree related to sports science or something, and he put a thing on his story being like, "I don't see how you can grow on reps in reserve." And I was like, "You're just trying to annoy people now, Jordan." Like, yeah, he, he just doesn't give one, mate. He just doesn't. Yeah. But I rate it. I really do because I bet he gets asked some weird ass questions. When so, you're that yeah. rich and that successful, you really don't give a shit, do you? Yeah, it's true. like Ian Valier's Q and A's. Like he just fucking rips into people. All oh, mate, time. yeah. He would just so, like he would just tell people to fuck off or be like, "Why are you asking me this?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we look That's at the, sort of like the people that JP's thinking of, it's probably higher level bodybuilders who have already got a shit ton of tissue who yeah. can only yeah, push up 20, 30 pounds before they feel like absolute shit and their training is horrific. So they yeah. can they can do that and then they're gonna sort of have to come back down again. It exactly. just didn't read. It read like general advice, though. When uh, Dan sent it into our chat, and we all were like, "Yeah, this isn't great advice." But like Tom said, I think for some people it's great. But he he tends to just, I don't know. Maybe he thinks of a certain individual and gives the best advice for them. But the way he talks is like general advice, and I think that's where he gets into trouble. But also, he said some interesting stuff about drugs and primo usage and minimum primo usage. Oh, what a guy, mate! Never what let him forget. 700 minimum. 
That was good. What? Have you not heard that? No. He said it's, it's worth He's changed thinking. his mind on that now. Yeah, his, his, his you're views allowed have to, You're allowed to change your mind on shit. Like, I don't get it when people have a go at someone for some shit that they said years and years ago that they've now changed their mind on. Yeah, yeah. Like, absolutely. if you're not allowed to change your mind on stuff, then what is the fucking point of science? Yeah. Like, literally. science is trying to get closer to the hypothetical right answer. And we're probably yeah. going to make some missteps along the way and we're going to have to change our mind about things. It is still jokes, yeah. I'm not going to lie. That 700 primo <laughs> comment will go down in history. I love that comment so much. It's so it's, funny. Well, I have a question from one of my uni mates and it, it, it will lead down quite a funny rabbit hole, I think, which is what are the benefits with carb cycling? Oh, no. And we are going to talk about people that are about 20 weeks post-show with high days still. <laughs> well, the, the obvious is you can place the carbs where, where you need them more. Any particular uh, sessions or muscles you're trying to improve or you struggle to maintain. Uh, say you're crap at pressing. you got a nice push day. Maybe put some more around that. No, Tom, you're not having it. Oh, he's not having Tom's it. Tom's not having right, it. Let's hear it. Let's hear bro, it. mate, don't even get me started, bro. Okay, my legs are shit, so I need more carbs to feed my leg sessions. No, you need to fucking train them better, and you need to stop yeah, touching to new loads. Oh, my God, mate. Just like, I think it's just like, talk to your ego a second. Um, it's not the maybe, be-all maybe you'll make oh, Maybe you'll make progress, bro. What is that all about? <laughs> I do get... Love Jack's... Jack is talking about the rationale really well, if people are doing it. Hopefully, Jack can do it. But I see people high days and they're like, I don't know how many weeks, like Dan said, 20 weeks post-show. And I'm thinking, okay, yeah, instead cool. of having low days and high days still, why don't you just separate the calories? Because our calorie intake can be literally the same throughout the week. Why have you got to prioritize high days on days where we got to do, oh, it's push day, had a shit chest on stage. Let's put some more carbs in. What? What is that all about? If someone said that to me, man, I'd be like, Get a grip of yourself, bro. Just train more accurately and execute better. And yeah, to be fair, training is going to be the reason you have a crap body part, not that you weren't exactly, mate. On that oh, day. god damn it. I didn't have an extra 175 grams of carbs pre and post around <laughs> my very workout window, so they're more switched on. It didn't die. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> but I will say, if you've got a body part focus, or if you're dieting and you find that for one session you're more drained or you just have a higher and lower appetite on different days, there are on-paper benefits. But, yeah, you can't, like, yes. you can't out-nutrition a crap training plan. See, that that that, that is that is correct. Like, I agree with that. Like, the thing is there, dieting off-season. Dieting, by all means, prioritise carbohydrates maybe around a certain day, which you find yourself, like, maybe dipping in energy. For example, like a leg day or a push day. Like your push day, you might feel really energized. Leg day, it might be a brutal leg day. Brutal leg day. It might be like an extra extra carbohydrates around the pre workout window. But I'm seeing it around off season stuff. It's not, it's po po like post dying phase, high days on the weekend. What is that? What I don't get, bring them back up to maintenance. That's what's going to make them progress even more. Establish maintenance, find maintenance, establish a surplus, and then get back to growing straight away. Don't tease somebody with high days on the weekend where they have an extra bowl of 100 grams of cream over ice, bro. <laughs> yeah, I feel like... I feel like if I know, your high day was six Krispy Kremes and uh, a Domino's and... <laughs> exactly, mate. <laughs> exactly. I, I, that, was, uh, that wasn't a high day, bro. That was diabetes day. <laughs> diabetes day. Fair play, fair play. Like, my biggest, my biggest gripe with with it is the practicality of like carb cycling like yeah it's all great if you're a high level bodybuilder and you've got all this time in the world to prep your food or pay somebody to do it for you but most people are pretty fucking busy they have lives that they kind of need to do and if you've got like oh there's these two or three days a week which you need to cook completely different meals for mm -hmm. like it's the same sort of thing with training day rest day like if you've got entirely different stuff it's such a pain in the ass to deal with that's like me now. Now I work. I have the same food every day. Same yeah, five meals, thing, no But imagine me going, oh, now, nah, mate, Friday, Saturday, bro, high days are in. What? <laughs> it just, it's just an impracticality, mate. Like, like Luke It's said. just annoying because also when you're making meals, say you're on a meal plan, having to go, oh, shit, this meal actually needs 
15 <laughs> grams of peanut butter because I've got higher fats this day and less rice. Like, no, I know exactly the quantities of all my meals. I don't even have to look at my phone anymore. It just makes life so much easier prepping meals. And then, let's well, say you're cooking rice for like four days prepping it and you've got a fucking high day in the middle. You're suddenly dividing something by like fucking three eighths or some bollocks. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to do it, man. No. Not worth. John, what are you going to say? Sorry, yeah. I cut you off. Well, I was going to say, uh, either way, your, your calories are going to amount to the same at the end of the week, regardless. It's Thank like, you. If, if it's programmed right, <laughs> if it is programmed you, right, your, your calories will end up the same at the end yeah, of the yeah. week, despite whether or not you're running high or low days, oh, if they God. are programmed correctly. Big up, John. Like I said, mate, might as well just split up the calories and keep them the same so you can eat the same every day. Wow. I feel like if you're dieting and you've got high days, you're just going to cling to the high days as normal and everything else is just going to feel like a low day. Like, I mean, it depends on your mentality, but yeah, like just, I'd rather eat the same food every day and not be like, oh my God, today's lower than yesterday. Are you kidding? I can't wait for Wednesday. That's like the highlight of my week because I get 50 grams more core. Food focus galore. <laughs> It starts to get you out of that like routine that you get into as well, because it's like every couple of days is something different. It's like if you're to have like a couple of off plans, like in a diet, it's like you have that meal. One, you've just sunk a fucking boatload of calories. And two, you're now like, you're now like, I actually really enjoyed that pizza or I really enjoyed my five guys to spike the fucking metabolism, bro. And now I don't really want to go back to my normal food. Like, nice. Or it doesn't live up to the hype and then you're on search of the next nice thing. Weekly refeed, mate, for casual clients. Easy peasy. Weekly five guys, five guys. Can you're finish the medium. Can you're finish the flat. medium chips, though. I can't finish oh, the medium wait. chips. Hey guys, I'm That's getting a bit flat great. in my, uh, my bulk. I'm getting a bit flat, so I'm going to have a Domino's tonight. Sorry, guys. I'm Good just man, gonna... mate. <laughs> I right. think I have one, one question left. I don't know about you lot. I'm yeah, I've got one more I was just going to say. So, Keno goes, do you believe in people getting lucky to be where they are in life? Uh, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. I would say there's got to be some some sort of work to get somebody to their desired place they want to be or where they're at. So, I think somebody's got to put some work in, haven't they, to get to where they want to be. Unless it's get unless it gets hands on a plate, I don't know. But yeah, what is a lottery winner? That's the thing. It's the majority. I say ninety nine percent of people that yeah. are higher up in the industry of what they do have got to at some point put some really hard grafting, whether that be obviously whatever they do. So I wouldn't say I would say they're not lucky, but I say for the one percent is out there. Yeah, I reckon luck is based on karma. You know, I'm, I'm a firm advocate of karma. We've got some spiritual shit going on. Welcome to nah, Canada, honestly, window. I'm not spiritual, but you know, I see someone do something bad, I'm like, karma's gonna get you, and it actually does every single time. And Dan's there, like, ha 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 ha. I yeah, saw I you eight months months ago, do this karma. wrong. <laughs> you had two RAR, you prick. You said you zero. <laughs> you promised me one RAR, you bell end. You cut depth. <laughs> yeah, they've got to, like the person has to be doing the like quote unquote right things anyway, and it's just the the stars align at a certain point, and that's when things start to take off for them. It's not necessarily that they like got particularly lucky and everything was handed to them. Hey, the harder I work, the luckier I get. That old quote. Sharp. Sure. Basically, right. yeah, work hard. My final question from Matt Kovacs. I believe Josh Jenkins coaches him. Goals within the this is for you, Tom. Goals within the gym slash work in the next year. Hey, goodness me. Goals Beat within the, the gym. PCA Island. Yeah, that's that's a good goal to have. That's something that I've made up in my head though. That's um <laughs> but goals in the gym. Uh yeah, goals within the gym, I guess slash like like bodybuilding. Slash yeah. work, so I guess slash coaching. So for for bodybuilding, I want to win a show this year. So I want to win one show. That's the goal. If I can win one show, I'll be great. Top three, yeah, that'd be good. Just get in there, would be good actually. Um, then within the gym, um, also with bodybuilding, that's this year. Coaching, oh mate, goodness me, keep doing what I'm doing. Keep doing what I'm doing, mate. Try and target the right people. 
keep putting out information that's helping people and trying to keep doing my job to the best of my ability and it will come bro but um i'd say reach a number of clients that i've got in my head by the end of this year and then i can maybe set something up next year i don't know it's all in my head it's oh my head. setting up a co-coach is that setting up a co-coach oh mate no <laughs> none of that <laughs> <laughs> none of that bro none of that mate maybe hopefully that could be a goal I can get a couple years time maybe I can see that but get Brightman but, under your wing yeah bro Brilliant. yeah just, just, just start no. discovering start discovering people <laughs> um, but that's the goal though with business just try and keep doing what I'm doing on the trajectory that, on the trajectory that I'm at and with bodybuilding try and do firstly try and come on a show okay people go oh yeah let's try and get top three well I'm actually going to get there first then try and win a show if I get top three, I'd be happy. Then do well at the finals. Hopefully, if I could be a top five junior in the country, I'd be happy. Mad. Fair play, fair play. Yeah. I can see the coaching I mean, stuff going got well. A, uh, a Dan's rant somewhat related to people doing shows and, and winning and being the only one in the class. Does that? Does that yeah. Work? See, this is this is something that bugs me as well, and this is why I didn't do first timers. Um, I'm not doing the first timer show because. I went to the first time I showed there was one person there two years ago. And then last year there was two people. Well, I don't want to compete against two people. I want to compete against the best in my age group. And if I, I went to PCA Midlands, there was seven guys there, all really, really good. I don't know if you know, there's this Charlie Bowen guy who went for his pro card this year under Tom Hames. Ridiculous physique. But he was competing in the um he was competing in the juniors last year. And then you had like other people like Harry Waller, Cam Underwood, all these all these different different guys. And I'm thinking, I want to be against them people, not the guy who's showing up for the first time when there's one, two people. I want to con- like diet down for 25 weeks, knowing that I'm going against the best in my age group. That's my sort of um, sort of take on things. Not just because I want to be a junior bodybuilding champion in my bio, first time as like, if there's one person turn up, I'd rather come fourth out of nine rather than first out of one. I reckon if you win by default, they should inscribe it on the back of the medal. Or No, like, that's a big thing. Yeah, I think or you just post it. Unfortunately, there wasn't that. There was a, uh, there was only X in the in the show today, or X in the class. You see a lot yeah, of people do it. To be fair, I think that happened to um, Reese in his like second show. I think he won his class because he was the only one in it, and he didn't he didn't put it on his story as like oh I got first. Like he just had like a first place medal with mm. his like third or something. I was like oh, fair play to that. Yeah, so I read that people go oh yeah first at the two bros show. I think oh yeah well there's only one person there. I've seen so, that a lot. Like, two bros natty when you get like one person in it. Yeah, mate. It always happens, bro. But I'm just saying that it's, it's not a bad thing that you're the only person there. It's actually quite a good thing because it just shows that you've probably died. It's like a prolonged show. Maybe that's why you don't see many people at a final or a two bros natty show where Miles had to extend his uh, prep by about another, I think it was like five, six weeks. Nobody's probably dying for that long. So it's probably like a, a satisfaction to you knowing that you probably dieted harder for long of other people. So these... Well, it does people. make me wonder... Like, really, there is no criteria besides, you know, maybe like weight or whatever. I could literally just fucking hop in shows and just pick up like second places, just hit left. Yeah, right mate. Literally, yeah, man. Like, look at me, mate. I'm so much better than all of you. Yeah. Because <laughs> it annoys me. Fair enough. If you come in and you look ridiculous and you win first and you're the only one there, fair. But some of the ones we've sent into our podcast chat. Oh, I remember this girl. I don't know her name. I would bait her out, but she she probably looks about what ten weeks out, like genuinely so bad. Yeah, and they're like, there with the first, and I'm like, I'd be I'd be yeah. human if I won and a fed posted my like federation posted my photo going, oh here's the winner. Yeah. I'd be like fucking remove tag, like do not credit me for that, like no. But yeah, man. That uh, I do see it. I do, you do you do see it a lot with people with them. Um, not, but just state it. It's not a bad thing. Just say it's one of one. If you're any yeah. person there. It's all good. You're not going to get any about the look. You know, bodybuilding's about the look. Like how how pleased with the look are you versus your last show? Just compare it to you exactly, know, exactly, like mate. Exactly. People want clout. Same people that ego lift. One of one, boo. I'm the best. Yeah. That's it. Honestly, that's it. That's literally all it's for, mate. That's literally all it's for. Going right, back to the two question. why do they have a uh, like natty side of the federation? I 
it's like a natural cup, isn't it? They call it a natural can you, cup. Can you turn like you can't turn pro in it, can you? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you, you can. can. What like IFBB? I think they have like natural IFBB. Yeah. It must be. It must be. But there's no, there's must no be. point because you wouldn't accept a pro card in that. Because if you're winning against a bunch of natties, get a pro card in that. Then there's not like a natty pro league for that. Then you are up against the assist people. You just get absolutely dicked. No, there's there's the Natty Olympia. So surely there's isn't that run by the IFBB? No, nah, that's not by. No, no. That's, oh, okay. That's that's I, like um, UKDPA, isn't it? Uh, it's um, PNBA. Yeah, something like that. And then there's the WMBF one as well. I don't know about mm-hmm. the other. The one. P the PMBA one, the natural Olympia, is like from UKDFBA. It's like associated with that. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Never mind. Yeah, and then there's one that's associated with the BMBF as well. Oh yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah. I know which one you're on about. Uh, if if you got a pro card and you could stand toe to toe with some assisted guys, that'd be fucking. You imagine you'd be like, I came fifth out of nine, and they were all on gear, and I wasn't. That's pretty mad. Like that. Um, what's that? What's that guy's name? It's Kendall or something. He beat. Um, oh, you do you know Slee or any of you? You must. Yeah, he, but that guy who who beat Slee at the Arnold's, he came top ten this first pro show. Really. He is nuts to be fair. Came top ten, mate. Is a natural. He is nuts. He is crazy. He is nuts. That's but scary. <laughs> it is, mate. Honestly, his muscle belly is absolutely ridiculous. And he's peeled yeah, as well. He so just help. But, we can dream. You know, it's all well and good, mate. I'll just be here looking like a giraffe on stage at six foot four. <laughs> That's like, what, what did I call it? A shreds? Fucking shit genetic gang or whatever it was. Shit structure gang. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Oh, God, man. man. Has yeah, anyone got any yeah. more questions? No. I'll take that as a no. No. Yeah. Weren't you going to say one? Me? You started speaking, I swear, a second ago. Yeah, it was, that, yeah. Was, that was about my goals, mate, about coaching and stuff. That was, and then Luke interrupted. Oh, was that his last question? That was it. I, yeah, I don't think I've got any more questions. Let me check. I've got one that says, does Luke's passive ROM limit how many sex positions he can do? From my experience, no. He's, you know, when he gets down to it, he really... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dan, have you got I've the wheel up? Spin the wheel. Um, how, much, the wheel. how much time have we got you for? I don't want us to keep you with shit chat. Mate, mate, you wait, you can, we, we can keep this going, mate. We can keep this going, mate. Meal up till 15 minutes time, bro, so it's all good. All right, 15 what, minutes. What wheel are we spinning? The Dan Rance or the... We've had a we've had a Tom Rance. Spin the, the topic one. We'll see if there's any decent ones in there. Put it on the share got... screen. It's a lot of fun. Who's got it loaded up? I need to head off, boys. I've got something cooked in. Oh, uh, fair play, mate. Adios, right. John. You take it easy, John, mate. Bye. See you later, bro. But who's got no, this I, wheel? I, I, you never sent us the link to it. Yeah, but you're oh, the one I just out. looked up spinning wheel, copied and pasted the document in it and did it for me. <laughs> Have you not got it? Right, we'll go with another Dan Rance that Miles ranted about the other day, Miles Mason. It's right. about doing a category you don't fit. I may have ranted about it before, potentially, yeah, but I'm yeah. ranting about it again. Because it needs restating with you're gonna com- do men's physique, aren't you, Dan? Yeah, because I'm built for men's physique. Reese. <laughs> <laughs> if no, this was inevitable, okay. Reese and Finn almost swapping categories or just changing categories was always but going I reckon to Finn will do all right as men's physique. hundred percent, man. They'll both do all right. They'll both yeah. do very good. Yeah, they are good body. As much as I make jokes on Slate, them, they are pretty well they're fucking bigger than me by country mile. So Reese is doing classic. No, I think he's just doing bodybuilding. That makes more sense. I don't know how big his legs are though. I think he's just pretty he's, lean. He said or just he like freaky, like uh, veiny. He just doesn't rate his inserts, but he said he could grow them fairly okay. Yeah. I guess time will tell when he steps on stage. But yeah, my yeah, damn rant. Done one leg day a week, hasn't he, for like the whole of his off season? Yeah, yeah, that changed. Now he wouldn't do men's physique. But yeah, my oh, damn yeah, rant. Yeah. What was it? The, the worst one is 
Oh, you're just going to jump into a men's physique show for your first time, bro? Yeah. Like, like oh, no, God. I'm not. Because I'm not built for that. Look at me, I'm a door. <laughs> no. I'm a door. Oh, that was my head in. And then Miles mentioned about, oh, I'm, I'm cancelable at this point. Fat girls just doing well, thinking their wellness because they're fat. <laughs> that is true. Honestly, that's what Miles said. That's what Miles is, said. I, I'm just restating what Miles said. Because it's true, man. I see so many people. Uh, so many people spring to mind. There's been so many times you've like not name dropped someone, but so many people spring to mind for that. We don't have uh, enough viewership to uh, so it's be cancelled. Yeah, yeah. How many? We probably got what a 10, 10, 12 viewers. He's looking it up. What are you looking? Nothing. Yeah, well, Jack, oh, look at how many viewers do we get? Uh, Tom right, has come right. on for an hour and a bit of his time. For ten people, so, yeah, we can't tell Tom how many viewers we get. That's... Mate, I don't mind at all, mate. I don't mind at all. Everybody starts somewhere. Exactly, mate. Exactly. How many viewers does Wamcast get? If that's a wrong question, to answer, we can just edit that out. Oh, mate. I, I was gonna say I don't. I don't even know, bro. Who runs it? The account is it Perrin? Perrin. Bro, again, mate. I don't. I don't even know that question. I weren't even part. I just turned up. <laughs> That's kind we've of the vibe I'm on. We yeah. got combined 25 on our previous, and before that, we got a combined 50. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That's not even that yeah. bad. I'm not even... Uh, no. YouTube's low, starting to do well. That bad. It could be worse. That's about that. Jeez. That's good. It's yeah, not imagine totally if there were, like, 50 way. people in a room watching us talk. Like, fucking hell, that'd be horrific. They'd all yawn, mate. <laughs> yeah, they'd be well bored. I've been getting more DMs about it, to be fair. Like, random people I'll interact with be like, oh, I like the pod. And I'm like, what the fuck are you on? No, you don't. Why do you listen to us for that long? Yeah, I get weirded out. I close the DM, I block him. I'm like, you must be a weirdo if you like the pod. <laughs> right, boys, I'm starving. I'm about to go and eat, like, fucking three people's worth of dinner uh, um, because I'm on holiday. It's all inclusive, so I'm, all right. I'm allowed to just get fat. Um, so I'm going to head off. I reckon we wrap it here. No worries. Any uh, closing words of wisdom, Tom? I think he's frozen. What's up, bro? <laughs> Any closing words of wisdom? Mate, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate the Catabolic Window hosting this lovely yeah. podcast. I hope people have got a little insight onto into my mind about this industry, people, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah. Appreciate you listening, guys. My closing statement is I would recommend Tom as a coach if you're not going to sign up with Luke or Jack. Cheers, oh, man. Mate. Get fact, up there at the, oh, at the end. Stop it, mate. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll In take fact, it, I did recommend you recently. Somebody asked me about what oh. I thought of you as a coach, and I was like, yeah, sign Pay up. Him. And then they signed up. Give him some money. Give him some money quick. Mate, I need... Mate, I will... <laughs> Affordable no, coach it. as well, my ad. Very affordable. I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate it. it. means a lot. He's number one on my podium out of the two, so. Out of the two, yeah. To be, yeah. Oh, yeah, my to, days. Yeah, to be fair. <laughs> right, right, let's wrap it up there. there. Thank you very much for your time, bro. Um, oh, actually, where can people find you? Yeah. Um, oh, mate, Instagram name. What's my Instagram name? Instagram Tom Taylor is, underscore TBT. Yeah, Tom Taylor underscore TBT on Instagram. Follow me on there, and then uh, just and then message me saying catabolic window, because then you can um, for yeah, a discount on say, coaching. Say that I found your catabolic. Yeah, every bro. Time you send that, we get an entire kilo of protein powder every single time. Oh yeah. It's yes, just, bro. That's what it's. Yeah, there you go, guys. Do it. You get twelve months of free coaching. <laughs> yes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> this right. code only lasting for the next two minutes see you in a bit <laughs> <laughs>